Oh, hey, what's up? So I'm just playing a little Zelda here, and luckily I've got a place to store the Switch components on my floating shelf. So my kids and I love to play the Switch, Mario Kart, different games, and I didn't have a place to store the Switch components. So I whipped up this floating shelf with this awesome piece of walnut that I've had laying around for years. And so I used something called a keyhole routing bit to make this guy. It didn't take long at all. I'd love to show you exactly how I did it. So check it out on this episode of Field Treasure Designs. Nobody wants this junk, so we're gonna take this little open space on the wall and make a floating shelf. I grabbed my piece of walnut and I laid it on the wall with a level to get it straight. Then I used my stud buddy to find some studs in the wall. That way I can use the anchor points there to hold the shelf in place. Then I did a quick measurement on the floor with the switch and the components deciding how long I want the shelf. All right, now the fun part. This is the keyhole router bit I was talking about. I'll have a link to that product below in the show notes. I tighten it up in my router here, and this is about the depth that you want on your router there. So yeah, my router here comes with a guide that you can attach to the router itself, which is perfect for this application. So I'm gonna attach it here, and then I'm gonna adjust it on the board so that the router keyhole is gonna be right in the middle of the board there. Next, I made my marks where I want the router keyhole to go. Now, it's important to remember you're going to plunge in that circle and then go down the line a little bit to where the bolt is going to stick into the hole there. So you have to kind of think that through when you're making your marks. Now we're going to get crazy here. So I haven't done this in a while and I needed to do a practice run. So I'm going to take the middle section where I'm not planning to put a screw in and just practice. So let's give it a first shot. And wow, that totally sucks. I did an awful job. So I learned from my mistake here. I realized that I was way too wobbly. I wasn't accurate at all. So we're gonna try again and hopefully we fix the problem. Yes, much better. Now I went a little bit too long on the keyhole path there, but other than that, it's all good. So let's do the last one. Okay, that's my best one by far, awesome. The length is good, the cut is clean, I finally did it right. So the way it'll work, I'll screw the screw into the wall and then that head will go through that hole and then down that channel. Back on the wall, I did my final marking and made sure the board was nice and level and now I'm going to screw in two screws into the wall that will serve as the anchor points. For each screw though, I tighten it a little bit and then slide the board over it and I repeat that process until the board is nice and snug. Time for a quick test fit, and yeah, it needs to be tightened up just a little bit more, but yeah, this is great. So now I'm gonna jump back to my shop and do a final sanding. This is my first time actually using my new palm sander from Bosch, and I love this thing. Stay tuned for a video as I review it. After I sanded it, I used a tack cloth to get everything off of it, and now it looks nice and clean. Okay, there it is, my easy DIY floating shelf that'll hold my switch and controller, and it's awesome. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.